I got COVID in April 2020. At the moment I'm on modified duties. Uh, I was off on sick for six months and since with the arrangements with my brigade we've moved on to modified duties. Uh, last December um, I got a positive test and then spiralled down, downhill pretty quickly and was hospitalised and quite seriously ill. And then when I came out of hospital I've had long COVID ever since. I have been unable to get back to work since I became ill, yeah, and that's a long time to be away from work. I got COVID uh, in March of 2020. On the 24th is when I actually came down with um, sort of all the fever and became sort of bed bound, if you like. And my initial infection was horrendous. Uh, it was very much kind of not knowing if you're going to wake up the next day. It was terrifying. Um, and then after that, it sort of came in, in waves. So sort of a brief period of, oh, I'm past this. Um, you know, I've dealt with the worst of it, I've survived. Uh, now I'm just feeling rough. Um, but then there was kind of more waves and more symptoms that came later. So it actually got a lot worse before it got better. Mostly for me, I suffer with fatigue. So I'll be really wiped out. If I manage to get up and do, take the dog out or something like that, I'll be back in bed for the day. And that can be, sort of that, for me, that lasted that will last a couple of weeks. It has impacted, I've had time off, I've been off the run at times, um, more off the run than on the run. But that frustration and the depression that can come with that and uh, sort of the emotional feelings, uh, just, yeah, feeling, and not knowing when it's gonna, you know, ha what the trajectory of it is, how it's gonna pan out. I don't know how to explain it, just pure delirium in bed, just not being able to string a sentence together. I had brief periods where I could sort of go and eat some food and then I was back sort of in bed just you know useless or whatever couldn't really concentrate on anything. They talk about breathlessness which yes I had that sort of going up and down stairs but this was um, just not being able to get a complete breath like you could lay in every position and it, I don't think it helps that it's really scary. I ended up with a very bad chest, um, rapid heart rate, um, it was within three, two or three days I lost my sense of taste and smell. Um, I had it was very flu-like symptoms but specific body aches which was down the back side of my body. I've been suffering with tinnitus, um, shakes at like different, different times, real bad sort of dizziness and dizzy spells. But no, thankfully I've improved a lot but I'm still suffering with quite a few of the, the symptoms which are holding me back from every, doing every, everything that I normally do in everyday life. I've not been able to look after my own children. I just haven't had the energy. And yeah, that, well, you can imagine how, how upsetting that is. Yeah, really tired, um, which I was unable to sleep, unable to concentrate, so that commonly called brain fog which manifests itself in some really strange ways um, which are quite unsettling and uh, not just for me but for the people around me so yeah my, my mental cognitive um, ability was really impaired and that fatigue I had never experienced anything like that before like if, it, if I could walk out of this with just the shortness of breath I could deal with that because it's not scary anymore it just whenever I'm tired the shortness of breath comes back but the brain fog, I literally, I just can't function. And it was only really when we, when the lockdown eased and you could see friends again that I realised that I was seeing friends that I've known for a, for, you know, for a lifetime and I couldn't remember their names. I'm like looking at them like, huh? um, And I put that, at the time I put that down to fatigue because I didn't know that that was a symptom of long COVID until someone said, no, that's actually a thing. Firefighters Charity really was the first positive contact that I had had with any organisation other than my family and friends and work were very supportive as well. But yeah, the Firefighters Charity set up um, Zoom meetings with other long COVID sufferers and we all found that absolutely fantastic, really supportive, very empathetic and a big part of my recovery. We try and give them a set of tools, if you like, to help them manage the condition as best they can. 
So it's knowledge, you know, knowledge, skills, techniques, all of those things that, that literally they can employ when they go away from here. We have a thorough assessment process at the start of the week um, and then we can really tailor the programme to your needs. In the gym, in these specific sessions, everyone gets their own individualised programme. Um, so we use an app called Salasso, which is where we can give individual exercises to people. Um, so this is a really nice environment, so everyone can be in here working at the same time, but all on their own, own programme. Um, and then we've usually got a few therapists in here and we can dot round from person to person to help give them feedback, help them guide them through their programme. The whole philosophy is that we treat people as individuals. So what we try and do is if someone's contacted us, contacted you know through the assessment practitioners, then we will tend to do like a, either a telephone or online screening consultation just so that we can get a history of what's happened, the symptoms that they're suffering from, and just to make sure you know, that they're appropriate for the course. You know, and, and that has to, you know, things that have to align are you know, our expectations and actually their expectations as well. You know, they've, they've got to be in, you know, they've got to want to engage with, with what we're actually providing. You need rest, but it's not really practical when you've got families and everything else and a normal life going on to be able to just say uh, you can rest and come in somewhere like this where you've got everything structured if you're not feeling great you can have a rest plus you've got the food and stuff being cooked for you it's, it's a massive massive weight off your shoulders yeah the food's great as well um, yeah there's there's drop-in sort of moments with counsellors or with welfare and the count and the physiotherapy team so there's lots of opportunities to make it yeah very personal but when you're here and you're sat talking to people that are going through exactly the same thing and there's also that because there's some weird and wacky symptoms with this thing and you're like you know but anyone else experienced this and they're like oh yeah yeah and it's kind of it's yeah it, that's there's a comfort in that these facilities are fantastic i wasn't aware of the the um, quality or the amount of facilities at, at the um at the free sites and um and then of course the staff are superb as well but yeah, you can get a lot of help and support and I'm really glad I asked for that but yeah, if you know someone that needs some help then signpost them towards the firefighters charity.